So my plan for this trip is to go up and over the mountain range behind me um, and try and get over to Banff. I'm looking at a distance of like 45 kilometers ish. Uh, I'm hoping to get the majority of that done today. So over 25 done today. Uh, we'll see how it goes. You know, there's a few kind of unknowns. First of all, it's early in the season. So I really don't know how much snow is up there. There's only really one pass I have to get by, but I, I have no idea how much snow or what it's gonna be like up there. I didn't really uh, bring snow gear. So if it gets bad up there, you know, I'm probably just gonna have to turn around. The other thing is I have really no idea where I'm gonna camp. I have a little spot on the map that looks like it could be okay, but uh, it's completely unknown. So I've mapped this route out. It's just based on a little bit of information that you can go up to an area called Stenton Lake next to Stenton Peak or Stenton Mountain. There's a, there's a scramble up there. So this is really a, a traverse route from one highway to the other. It's 35 kilometers as the, as the crow flies, but obviously um, more by foot. I'm following this braided river. I'm looking forward to finding, trying to find that spot to camp. The grizzlies are definitely out, so that, that, uh, that's definitely on the back of my mind. So, you know, it's not much you can do about that. That's the plan. Time to get going. So, I'm kind of frustrated with myself. I just realized that I went up the wrong branch of uh, the river, so I'm having to backtrack uh, probably over 500 meters. So, that's gonna kind of add a kilometer to this day. I don't know, half an hour or something. It just makes me think about a lot of what people consider as, you know, the most important wilderness skills or survival skills and all that. I mean, obviously there are these individual skills. Uh, navigation, well, I just, I just fucked up there in a really obvious route. Um, but you know, tying knots, how to use a knife, uh, how to cook food on a fire, how to make a fire. I mean, that's the big one. Everyone always says the most important wilderness skills or survival skills, making a fire. In certain situations, that's absolutely true. I think it's a little bit broader than that. The reality is, is the most important skill is being able to be alone and practicing being alone and actually doing real trips. Now they all, they're all different, right? So, you know, one person can do, might do a lot of sort of backpacking style of trips. Another person might do paddling big canoe trips. They're all different getting my feet soaked. What kind of situation are you going to be put, are you going to put yourself in or find yourself in that you're going to need to get yourself out of? And just practicing knots or practicing how to make a fire and all that, those are, might be important, but I think you have to put them together in trips and a certain amount of those, you've got to be alone. When you're alone, there's a whole bunch of different things that happen. The main one is that, at least I find, every emotion that you feel, and in particular negative emotions, are kind of exaggerated. You know, if you feel panicked, or you feel nervous, it's exaggerated when you're alone. And it makes you make bad decisions. The other thing is that when you're alone, everything takes longer. You know, if you're two people and you get somewhere and you want to make a fire instead of camp, one person can get on starting that fire right away. And the other person can start making, setting up the camp. 
and you have these two things that come together at once and you're set. Whereas if you're alone, you've got to decide which do I do first? And in every situation, the right decision could be slightly different. Kind of related to that, I find when you're alone, you get tunnel vision. You might start doing something and get overly focused on it and not realize that it's time to stop and move to something that's more important at that moment. Again, you might be somewhere and you start to say, I'm going to set up a fire and you get kind of obsessed with it, but it's getting dark. You don't have a shelter set up and then you're going to get into a different problem because things get even more difficult once it's dark out. The other part of it is that when you're alone, you really sort of find out what you're good at and what you're bad at or what you need to work on. Oh, here we go. Oh, I can't believe I made this decision. I guess I just thought it was a braid and I took, I went up the north side of it. Should have gone the other way. Oh, it's really frustrating. But this is a perfect example. You know, if I had been with someone else, they might have said, eh, maybe we should look at the map. I said, I need to say, no, no, that way. So here we go. Freezing my feet again. Uh, all right, back on track. So this branch of the river is completely dry, which really messes up my plans because I was expecting easy water all the way along and uh, I don't have much left. Still making good progress. So I'm gonna kind of have a little break. Been almost, I've been moving pretty much non-stop for the past, I started at nine, five hours. So I was expecting it to be about between 25 and 30 K today. Maybe a little over halfway. Two o'clock, took five hours. It's hard to say exactly because it's gonna change a lot at some point and start to kind of go uphill. This has been pretty flat going. I also haven't eaten that much today, so I'm at this little spot that people camp at, I can tell, so. It's, it's always good to know, kind of keep track of where those places are. You know, you never know if when something changes, plans change, you're like, oh yeah, I know for sure there's like a really easy spot to camp at right here. For some reason I have to turn around or whatever. It feels good though, like your feet, the moment you take your socks off, your feet like dry almost instantly. Kind of gives them a reset. Have some real food. There's this weird thing that happens when I'm out alone, I'm like always calculating distances and time and distances and time, and distances and time. Like in my head all over and over and over and over again. But when I'm with someone else, I don't do that the same way. I just kind of like, sometimes you get into conversations or even if you're not, and you're a bit further apart, I don't find that you go over and over and over the same things in your head the same way. So it's definitely kind of more tiring in a way because you're, you're just kind of always on. Whereas when you're with someone else, you can kind of turn off sometimes. Oh, I feel a hot spot in my toe. So I try and make sure I have these kind of pre-cut pieces of luco tape. If you have it pre-cut, it just speeds everything up when you need to use it. If and when you need to use it. I'm definitely low on water again. Haven't seen any in a while. I'm on some kind of old logging road, which is pretty nice right now. I hope this holds up for a while. That really didn't last long. Kind of disappointed.
pretty sophisticated hunting camp here. Hunting camp or whatever you want to call it. It's got pretty much food cache, lots of structures, it even says it, camp. If you camp there, then you just have this epic view up there. Wow. So I'm up at this gully. It's kind of a, a slot there. I'm sure it basically gets no sun. So it's kind of full of snow. It's pretty deep right there, just to my waist. But this is like, I'm just assuming that the snow is so deep here because it, it's so shaded. So I, I'm hoping that this is just a little little spot that I have to pass. There was a route, that, like a higher route that I missed. And then I think right after this slot, it's gonna climb again. But this is like taking everything out of me and it's still pretty thirsty. So yeah, we're getting to that time of day where Slowing down a lot. Whew. I'm tired. So I just finished that little gully. Then right at the end, I punched through the snow, soaked all the way up to my knee. I was looking for water everywhere and I found it. So now I'm soaked. So that's nice. <clears throat> Get out of this gully. It's killing me. this path is but I gotta find it gotta find it Just bushwhacked up this hillside here. Actually find, found a trail that I've been trying to find for ages. It's coming up to seven. Nowhere near where I want it to be at seven o'clock. So keep on going. See what happens. This is uh, pretty brutal. Definitely a bit reassuring to be on some kind of trail. But uh, if I had gone up this way before, probably would have saved an hour. Whew, starting to gain some elevation. last four kilometers or so have been an absolute crawl. There's pretty deep snow in the trees so I climbed up higher where it's just a little bit of a crust. Some places it's bare. 
Uh, this is kind of the moment of truth because I'm gonna come around this corner and see, like, can I camp here? I think so. I hope so, because I am not turning around. That's for sure. Kind of past the point of no return, but it looks okay over there. So I'm gonna go down to that little nook there, see if I can find a spot to camp. I was gonna go up over there, but I don't like the look of that climb. So yeah, tomorrow, I'm gonna see about cutting down that valley there. That wasn't the plan, but I don't think I have much choice. We'll see. I came all the way up there, through that valley, all the way up, then I climbed up, cut over. I'm at about 30 kilometers now. I think I'm there. Oh yeah. Now the question is, where do I camp? Where do I camp? Oh. Let's see. This is pretty cool here. I kind of like this. Tomorrow I'll pop down there. Hopefully it's uh, quick and easy. Famous last words, I doubt it, but I kind of like this up here. This is crazy. This works out. Pretty epic spot. I think so. Oh man. All star campsite. Holy smokes. Look at this. I'm in business. Look at this view. Panorama. Amazing. My feet are kind of cold. I will make a fire happy about this. Just hope it doesn't get too windy. I think I might put it right there. It's kind of flat. I'm gonna set up here. I'm gonna put the tent facing, with the back facing here and facing that way because the low end of my tent is uh, the back end of the tent's much smaller, and I think the kind of main the prevailing wind comes this way. Um, right now, it was a long day. My feet are soaked, so I'm gonna quickly do a couple of things. Change my socks, put on my warm jacket. So that's one thing, I wanna make sure I have that on. My hands are doing pretty good, but I like having my gloves handy. It's definitely gonna get dark soon. 8.55, sun sets at 9.31. This time of year, I've got long days, but I still always get things ready because it's gonna get dark and I don't wanna be looking for this when I need it. The next part is feet, because my feet are, my feet are cold. So I've got my neoprene socks, but I'm gonna go kind of one step further and actually change into my sleeping socks too. So I have my sleeping socks and I have my plastic bags. I really wasn't expecting this much snow. So live and learn. That's done.
this tent needs a, a rear pole, but I don't normally bring one, so I'll cut a branch. All right, so at least we have shelter now. For some reason, it kind of bugs me. There's often like a bubble on one side of it. it doesn't really matter, but. I got pretty much where I wanted to get to. One of my plans was to go up to Stenton Lake, then cut down the, the from the pass there. There's a pass right here, uh, which I think I'm gonna take because I can drop down out of the snow quicker. And I think that's just a safe plan for tomorrow. I hope it goes. I hope it's not like a shit show down there. It's cliffed out. I'm in a lot of trouble. So that's it. It's a pretty sweet little campsite though. Just a perfect little bench above this valley. It's a crazy peak in the background. It's dead calm. Dead calm. Not any wind. I hope that holds out. Makes things fun. So I'm just gonna eat, call it a night, and uh, I'll check in tomorrow. So that's it, just packed up. This is probably one of my better camping spots ever. Five star camping. The weather was perfect last night. There wasn't any wind at all. So um, now I'm gonna try and get just over to that little pass there, right in between the trees and go down hopefully the snow's not too bad up on the higher slopes there's still cornices and stuff like that so way more snow than i was expecting but all right time to go amazing valley so There's a sign which at the pass uh, it might say entering Banff National Park or it might say watch out below there's a big cliff I don't know yeah entering Banff so this is a national park here What it looks like it's either gonna be good or bad or somewhere in between. So this looks doable to me. Just down there, then out. Snow ends. The snow ends hopefully kind of at that. I hope it's not a cliff there, but that would really suck. Down those trees there, and out. 
pretty amazing. I can't remember what mountain that is. Beautiful. I think it actually looks okay. There was one spot on the map that had a lot of contour lines really close together. So I was hoping it wasn't like really cliffed out. I don't think it's cliffed out, it's just kind of a gully. So I think once I get into the trees down there, I'll be fine. But this looks, this looks totally doable. And I think, I think there's less snow down there. So that wasn't so bad. So now I'm in this little gully. There's actually, there's actually some water, which is gonna make my life easier. But my guess is it's gonna be a little bit of a slog. I think there's supposed to be a main trail a few kilometers down. So I'll see how this gully goes. I'll just take my time, but I know that I'm kind of on the last third. So I just need to take my time and be careful. But I'm really happy that there's water here. That was just brutal yesterday. That creek bed is just, it's all blow downs and there's still big piles of snow in there. So I'm following the contour through the forest at like 6,000 feet. This is what my last kind of two hours have looked like. Just going through this forest. I'm through a creek bed gully. Decided to pop up into the forest. I think it was the right decision. Found a bunch of game trails kind of going the direction that I want to go in. So the pace picked up a little bit. I feel like I'm not too far from one of the main hiking trails, which will hopefully make my life a lot easier and then just cruise out but this has been a pretty interesting trip so far I've seen basically every imaginable condition from desert like and dry to snowy alpine now moss covered forest walking it's, uh, it's been pretty interesting i'm pretty exhausted but hopefully we're getting somewhere the game trails really help they just kind of make you feel like you have some direction they tend to know where they're going, I think, taking the shortest route, so. So this section, in my mind, was gonna be the easy part. And it is not. Um, I've been bushwhacking next to stream for like the past three hours I'm just trying to say like keep moving keep moving constant forward progress because uh, I was expecting to sort of like turn my brain off and be on a trail not even close this is it's just like this all the way slow down and it's just always slowing me down. Doing like a kilometer, a kilometer and a half an hour, I think. That's what I'm estimating. It's pretty tough. I just hope it kind of like flattens out. It's a bit wider and then just turns into like gravel walking. But no, did that for a bit. And it just picks up again.
Uh, I've been doing this for too many hours. I'm just telling myself, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Whew. Just keep going, keep moving. Forward progress, forward progress. That's what we gotta do, forward progress. Finally back on a real trail. Hopefully this cruises a little bit. I think I have about 2K and I'm out. All right, that's it. So that's the whole front range from the Ghost to Banff. About 50 kilometers, right around 30 hours total. That was a tough trip, that's for sure. So that's the ghost to Banff crossing done. About 50 kilometers, 30, just over 30 hours travel time. Uh, amazing camp last night. That was just five star camping. Um, couldn't beat that, had a nice fire. You know, a lot of things happened. It's easy to make a plan and it's pretty rare that things go according to plan. You know, yesterday I was expecting way more water, so I was pretty dehydrated. Uh, I was expecting way less snow at altitude, but you know, it was still winter there. That changed my plans quite a bit. I had to, you know, go about a different route, which I had kind of a backup plan in my mind just in case. Uh, today, you know, coming down through over that pass and through the forest there, that was, that was rough going. You know, with the leftover snow, it's sort of like, do you post hole or do you bushwhack? Well, neither one is that much fun. I pretty much figured I'd finish today, late afternoon, and that's what happened. So, planning was okay that wise. A few things I probably change in retrospect. Maybe uh, something different about my water, but you know, it worked out okay. And uh, probably a different pot to melt water quicker. That was uh, not ideal last night, but it still worked. So uh, making a fire definitely helped. So, you know, I often say, oh, I don't think making a fire is the most important skill, but uh, sure helped last night. Got my socks all dry for this morning. I was able to melt a ton of snow, so that worked out. And it's good for the morale too, to have uh, some light. Amazing, amazing campsite. I mean, I don't know, I, that's probably my, in my top five ever. That campsite was just perfect. Uh, the weather last night was perfectly still, so I wasn't cold or anything like that. But uh, yeah, so I hope, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you next time.